Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wednesday edition of Video Clips. And um, just a couple of announcements. Um, remember, um, Central Ohio residents, uh, we have um, some type of programming on Tuesday, cooking classes and movie nights and potlucks and things of that nature. So come and join us for um, activities that involve health promotion. That's a good way to categorize all that Tuesday stuff. Um, remember, we have uh, psychological support groups for adolescents and adults, depression, anxiety, COVID, many, many different groups. And if you want information about that, send me an email at pamhopper at msn.com. Holiday cookies, don't forget, now's the time. Probably next week we'll have limited ability, if any, to get these uh, to people by Christmas. Um, and then new classes that we're offering. I've scheduled our kidney disease class, HIV AIDS, and um, uh, food allergies for uh, early next year and some more classes in the Cancer 201 series, which is alternative treatments. I think there are 10 lectures, maybe more than that on the Cancer 201 site right now, but I'm just going to keep creating material until we run out of it. Maybe that'll be never, but for the first time, we're creating a vetted library of alternative treatments. And what I mean by vetted is not just saying here it is, but really putting it through the rigor of looking at what is the opportunity for this to actually contribute to a cancer patient's survival and quantifying it in some way, shape or form. So I scheduled a couple more lectures. I'll get a couple more workshops in order and just look for more of that uh, throughout the year as I have time to, um, uh, to create more lectures, all right? So, Anyway, um, Wednesdays, um, I'm doing something that's really outside my comfort zone. I've been talking about myself and um, I don't like to talk about myself, to be honest with you. I like talking about facts. I'm a data girl. So I'd much rather tell you the results of a study than talk to you about what's going on in my life and my relationships and my COVID experiences and all that kind of stuff. But it seems to be helpful and it's spurring a lot of discussion. So I'm stepping outside my comfort zone again this Wednesday to talk to you about what's going on. Um, so the first thing I wanna tell you is that um, I get a lot of emails from people who are just incredibly sideways and boy, I get it. And I've been remarkably blessed to have had little interruption in a lot, a lot of my life. I mean, I'm working and you know, financially stable and you know, just a lot of sameness in my life, which people, as it turns out, they do like routine. They like for things to be stable and the same to a certain extent. Um, of course, a lot of things I miss. I've talked about that. I miss the dance company. I miss book club. I miss a lot of things. Um, but, uh, but I understand that if I were in a different situation, my view of all of this might be a lot more bleak. And I just want to tell you this. Let me, and, I, and I really believe this. I wouldn't tell you something I didn't believe. I think you guys know me by now. I say what I have to say, regardless of the consequences. I think it's all going to turn out okay. I think there's a long distance between now and okay, but it's going to turn out okay. And I say that because I know that the strategies that we're using are working already. Um, I know that the strategies that we're using are based on solid scientific legal precedent. And, you know, so I know it's going to be okay. I do. But there's another way that I know it's going to be okay. And that is that in the history of the world, there have been many, many evil, terrible things happen. Think about World War II. Hitler was an evil, terrible man, and he didn't win looked like he was going to win for a while and people were pretty despondent about that, but he didn't win. And this is the thing about criminals and despots all over the world, the history of the world, is that um, they always overplay their hand and they always underestimate humanity. They just underestimate the will of people to be free, the will of people to have justice prevail, and um, the will of people to survive. They just always underestimate it. And uh, some of you know, I am a World War II buff. I read a lot of stuff, I watch documentaries. It's just my favorite period in history for a lot of reasons. And um, you know, I, the things that inspire me are some of the things that I've seen in the past. Like there's a great movie, you can watch it, I think on Netflix or Amazon Prime, it's called In Darkness. And it's about, uh, it has subtitles. The, the event took place in Poland and it's about um, a, a couple of families, very wealthy Jewish people who escaped into the sewer. They had planned this if the Nazis came for them. They would escape into the sewer and live in the sewer until the war was over. And they had a lot of money and they took it with them. They brought all their jewelry, the whole nine yards and some sewer workers found them. And um, one of the guys was actually an anti-Semite, but for money, he would bring them food and take care of them. And 
when they ran out of money by then he was kind of attached to them and and he decided to take care of them on his own and um, a statue was built uh, for him in Israel. Um, another one, there are some great stories of the Dutch underground. I mean, that's where the Dutch hunger winter came from. The underground resistance ticked off the Nazis so much, they walled off the northern part of the country and prevented them from getting food and firewood and things like that. And then there's another great book. Um, I think it's being made into a documentary called 50 Children. Um, a, a man wrote this book. He discovered after his parents had died that they were helping, they helped 50 Jewish children get out of Germany's, uh, Hitler's Germany at a time when it was really risky to be a Jewish person wandering around Germany. And he tracked down as many of those 50 children as he could after his parents died and he found out about it. And um, so I see that and I just, you know, it gives you hope in the midst of all of that disaster, there, there were bright things happening. In the midst of this disaster, there are bright things happening. I try to talk about those too. And at the end, at the end, you know, it's okay. I have a friend who told me one time during a dark period of my life, everything turns out okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. And that's a quote from a movie. And if I knew which one I would tell you, if somebody knows you can email me because I do use it a lot. And that's the way I think it's going to be here. And we see signs of that. There are brave sheriffs who um, refuse to enforce orders and, and police, local police officers who, who refuse. And um, there are people who defy orders and keep their businesses open. And, and then the, the funny stuff happens. I mean, people send me funny videos that make me laugh out loud when I'm by myself at home, which, you know, it's got to be funny then. I received one from a guy in Australia. This is after the Australians closed down their stores and they made um, everything except food non-essential. So they, in a, in a big box type store, they had all the clothing and the jewelry and the handbags and makeup. Everything is, is walled off. You can't have it except for food. So the guy walks into the store, his wife's filming it. And he's just wearing like a jock strap or something. And they tell him he can't come in. He said, well, I don't understand why not. You say clothes are not essential. Well, they're not essential. I'm not going to wear them. And this whole interchange goes on for five minutes. It was hysterical. That is the resilience of human beings. That is the will of human beings to survive and thrive and overcome some of the worst adversity in the world. And, um, and they've done it for years. Individual people like Nelson Mandela have done it. And entire groups of people, like ethnic groups, have done it too. And we are going to do it too. So um, I wanted to just tell you this. Um, you know, I've been talking about um, how COVID has sprayed relationships and people who I was connected to and disconnected to and associations and that sort of thing. But, you know, I was thinking about this the other day. It's also repaired some relationships. And you may think, well, how could that be? We well, you know I like to maintain good relationships with as many people as I can. Now, as confrontational as I can be sometimes, you might find that a little bit surprising, but I promise you that is the way I think about things, right? So I'd rather be, you know, peaceful and getting along with people than not. Having said that, I won't compromise my values or that sort of thing. But in any case, there are a couple of situations in the last few years, well, probably more than a couple, but I'm going to talk about a couple, let's put it that way, in which my departure, disconnection from somebody was unpleasant, either a person employed by Wellness Forum who didn't leave on good terms or whatever. And a few of those people have actually reconnected with me in a very positive way. So while one relationship over here is getting fractured or torn apart or ended over here, a fractured, torn apart relationship is mending, you know? And so it goes to, um, you know, this idea, you hear this great reset idea, their idiotic idea of a great reset is never going to happen because of what I said before, humans just aren't going to allow it. But what is going to happen is a great reset of a whole lot of things. People rethinking their priorities, people getting connected to people they wouldn't have been connected to before. Everybody who's actively out there building for Make Americans Free Again and that sort of thing is finding that their social circles are getting bigger than they were before this happened, not smaller. So there is a great reset going on, just not the one that our rulers imagined when they started all this stuff. So um, I think that one thing I was talking yesterday about how to think of fearful people in a less negative way. And so um, I've been thinking about the fractured relationships and the people that you know I've disconnected from and that sort of thing. And what's gonna happen when like everybody knows the truth and some of those people are regretful. I think that what I'm gonna do is try to be as gracious as I can. You know, I think that uh, there's part of all of us that is gonna wanna say, I told you so, but I don't really wanna tell you so. I think I just want 
things to be okay. And when we make things okay for humanity, these individual little things, they're important. They seem important right now because they're happening to you, they're happening to me, but they become significantly less important when we start thinking about the bigger picture. So I'll leave you with that thought. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy learning more about this entire debacle and our perspective on it. And I'll be back to you tomorrow with more news.